Lochness Monster. This is a great mystery since 565 BC. Do you know anything about Lochness Monster? So my name is Anna Watson you're watching my universe. Before I start I want to say one thing that is please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon. So let's The first modern discussion of a sighting of a strange creature in the loch may have been in the 1870s, when D. Mackenzie claimed to have seen something wriggling and churning up the water. This account was not published until 1934, however. Research indicates that several newspapers did publish items about a creature in the loch well before 1934. The best-known article that first attracted a great deal of attention about a creature was published on 2 May 1933 in Inverness Courier, about a large beast or whale-like fish. The article by Alex Campbell, Walter Bailiff of the Loch Ness and a part-time journalist, discussed a sighting by Aldi Mackay of an enormous creature with the body of a whale rolling in the water in the loch while she and her husband John were driving on the A82 on the 15th of April 1933. The word monster was reportedly applied for the first time in Campbell's article, although some reports claim that it was coined by editor Evan Barron. The Courier in 2017 published excerpts from the Campbell article, which had been titled Strange Spectacle in Loch Ness. According to a 2013 article, Mackay said that she had yelled, Stop! The Beast! When viewing the spectacle. In the late 1980s, a naturalist interviewed Aldi Mackay and she admitted to knowing that there had been an oral tradition of a beast in the loch well before her claimed sighting. Alex Campbell's 1933 article also stated that Loch Ness has for generations been credited with being the home of a fearsome-looking monster. On 4 August 1933 the Courier published a report of another alleged sighting. This one was claimed by Londoner George Spicer, the head of a firm of tailors. Several weeks earlier, while they were driving around the loch, he and his wife saw the nearest approach to a dragon or prehistoric animal that I have ever seen in my life trundling across the road toward the lock with an animal in its mouth. He described it as having a long neck, which moved up and down in the manner of a scenic railway. He said the body was fairly big, with a high back, but if there were any feet they must have been of the web kind, and as for a tail I cannot say, as it moved so rapidly, and when we got to the spot it had probably disappeared into the lock. Letters began appearing in the Courier, often anonymously, claiming land or water sightings by the writer, their family or acquaintances or remembered stories. The accounts reached the media, which described a monster fish, sea serpent, or dragon and eventually settled on Loch Ness Monster. Over the years various hoaxes were also perpetrated, usually proven by photographs which were later debunked, Loch Ness Monster History. Saint Columba. The earliest report of a monster in the vicinity of Loch Ness appears in The Life of Street Columba by Adamnan, written in the 6th century ad. According to Adamnan, writing about a century after the events described, Irish monk Saint Columba was staying in the land of the Picts with his companions when he encountered local residents burying a man by the river Ness. They explained that the man was swimming in the river when he was attacked by a water beast which mauled him and dragged him underwater. They had tried to rescue him in a boat but he was killed. Columba sent a follower, Lou in Moku Minutes, to swim across the river. The beast approached him, but Columba made the sign of the cross and said, Go no further. Do not touch the man. Go back at once. The creature stopped as if it had been pulled back with ropes and fled and Columba's men in the pits gave thanks for what they perceived as a miracle. Believers in the monster point to this story, set in the river Ness rather than the loch itself, as evidence for the creature's existence as early as the 6th century. Skeptics question the narrative's reliability, noting that water beast stories were extremely common in medieval hagiographies and Adamnan's tale probably recycles a common motif attached to a local landmark. According to skeptics, Adamnan's story may be independent of the modern Loch Ness monster legend and became attached to it by believers seeking to bolster their claims. Ronald Binns considers that this is the most serious of various alleged early sightings of the monster, 
but all other claimed sightings before 1933 are dubious and do not prove a monster tradition before that date. Christopher Kenny uses a specific historical and cultural analysis of Adamnan to separate Adamnan's story about Street Columba from the modern myth of the Loch Ness Monster, but finds an earlier and culturally significant use of Celtic water beast folklore along the way. In doing so he also discredits any strong connection between Kelpies or water horses and the modern media augmented creation of the Loch Ness Monster. He also concludes that the story of Saint Columba may have been impacted by earlier Irish myths about the Caranush and an oilifist. The next eyewitness is Alexander MacDonald, 1888. In 1888, Mason Alexander MacDonald of the Briarton sighted a large stubby-legged animal surfacing from the lock and propelling itself within 50 yards of the shore where MacDonald stood. MacDonald reported his sighting to Loch Ness water bailer Felix Campbell, and described the creature as looking like a salamander. And the next eyewitness is Arthur Grant, 1934. On the 5th of January 1934 a motorcyclist, Arthur Grant, claimed to have nearly hit the creature while approaching a Briagin. Near the northeastern end of the lock, at about 1 am on a moonlit night. According to Grant, it had a small head attached to a long neck, the creature saw him, and crossed the road back to the lock. Grant, a veterinary student, described it as a cross between a seal and a plesiosaur. He said he dismounted and followed it to the lock, but saw only ripples. Grant produced a sketch of the creature which was examined by zoologist Morris Burton, who stated it was consistent with the appearance and behavior of an otter. 36. Regarding the lung size of the creature reported by Grant, it has been suggested that this was a faulty observation due to the poor light conditions. Paleontologist Darren has suggested that Grant may have seen either an otter or a seal and exaggerated his sighting over time. And the last eyewitness is Google Street View, 2015. Google commemorated the 81st anniversary of the surgeon's photograph with a Google Doodle, and added new feature to Google Street View with which users can explore the lock above and below the water. Google reportedly spent a week at Loch Ness collecting imagery with a Street View tracker camera, attaching it to a boat to photograph above the surface and collaborating with members of the Catlin Sea View survey to photograph underwater, searching. Edward Mountain Expedition, 1934, after reading Rupert Gould's The Loch Ness Monster and others, Edward Mountain financed a search. Twenty men with binoculars and cameras positioned themselves around the lock from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. for five weeks, beginning on 13 July 1934. Although 21 photographs were taken, none was considered conclusive. Supervisor James Fraser remained by the lock filming on 15 September 1934, the film is now lost. Zoologists and professors of natural history concluded that the film showed a seal, possibly a grey seal. And the next searches is Operation Dibskin. 1987, Operation Dibskin was conducted in 1987. 24 boats equipped with echo sounding equipment were deployed across the width of the lock, and simultaneously sent acoustic waves. According to BBC News the scientists had made sonar contact with an unidentified object of unusual size and strength. The researchers returned, re-scanning the area. Analysis of the echo sounder images seemed to indicate debris at the bottom of the lock, although there was motion in three of the pictures. Adrian Shine speculated, based on size, that they might be seals which had entered the lock. Sonar expert Daryl Lawrence founder of Lawrence Electronics, donated a number of echo sounder units used in the operation. After examining a sonar return indicating a large, moving object at a depth of 180 meters, 590 feet, near Urquhart Bay, Lawrence said, there's something here that we don't understand, and there's something here that's larger than a fish, maybe some species that hasn't been detected before. I don't know. And the last search for Loch Ness Monster is DNA Survey. 2018, an international team consisting of researchers from the universities of Otago, Copenhagen, Holland the Highlands and Islands, did a DNA survey of the lake in June 2018, looking for unusual species. 
108. The results were published in 2019. There was no DNA of large fish such as sharks, sturgeons and catfish. There was no otter or seal DNA either. A lot of eel DNA was found. The leader of the study, Professor Neil Jamel of the University of Otago, said he could not rule out the possibility of eels of extreme size, though none were found, nor were any ever caught. The other possibility is that the large amount of eel DNA simply comes from many small eels. No evidence of any reptilian sequences were found. He added, so I think we can be fairly sure that there is probably not a giant scaly reptile swimming around in Loch Ness, he said, so what is actually Loch Ness Monster? We don't know. So subscribe my channel and press the bell icon. If you like this video then give a like to the video and comment me how it is and which topic video you want to get new videos. Never forget to subscribe my channel because it's treasure of knowledge. Thank you.